Hi, I'm Marcus Hutzel. And if you'd like to have better sounding audio during your virtual meetings while still using your laptop, but want better audio quality than what your onboard laptop mic is giving you, then I have a relatively inexpensive solution for you. And this is it, the Movo VXR10. So whether it's because of the need to be virtual while a pandemic is raging, or whether you just want your audio to sound more natural and more professional while having online meetings, and and, of course, if you're willing to spend a nominal amount of money, then the Movo VXR10 is a great option. The Movo VXR10 is primarily meant to sit on top of like a DSLR or mirrorless camera to capture better audio during those scenarios, but you also can use it to just plug into your laptop with a few recommended accessories. And obviously I can't record with this mic while showing it to you like this, but I want you to hear it, so I'm going to switch over to this mic for the duration of the video. And now you're hearing the Movo VXR10. So as you can see, or rather here, it really is a great sounding mic. And here's some info about it. The Movo VXR10 is a directional microphone. It's a cardioid pickup pattern, which means it picks up sound more from the front of the mic and rejects sounds that are behind the mic. And unlike many onboard microphones, the Movo VXR10 is not limited in the frequency range that it picks up, meaning that it won't sound like a telephone call. It has really great natural sound quality for the money. It's also small enough that it will just fit in your backpack or your laptop bag very easily. And because it's small, you can position it in many different ways to get it closer to you. And that part is important, proximity of the mic to the sound source. It is important to note that this is not a USB microphone. And depending on the laptop you own, you can plug it directly into specific audio jacks on your computer, but not all jacks are created equally. And certain laptops like Apple MacBook Pros only have a single jack, and that could get you into trouble if you're not sure how all of this works. I'll cover those things in just a bit, but if you're unsure about your particular computer, then I'd pick up a USB microphone input adapter, like this one, and I'll cover the model I have in just a bit. And it is quite susceptible to handling noise, so once you have it all set, be mindful of where the cable coming out of the back of the mic is going, make sure it's not hitting anything. Make sure that if it's on a stand that you don't move it during the meeting. Basically, get it set and forget it, Otherwise, some of the handling noise is going to get picked up very quickly and into your online meeting. So for online meetings, a lot of people may use something like their Apple AirPods or a headset mic or their wired earbuds or one of those USB mics that make you look like, you know, a cool radio DJ. But the problem with those options are that AirPods and headset mics typically are not going to pick up all of the audio frequencies inherent in the human voice. The speaker part of those devices, that is what you hear out of these devices, usually sound great in your ears, but the microphone that's built into them is not meant to pick up the full sound of your voice or anything else, really. They're meant to make phone calls. Think of how a telephone call sounds. And here, I'll give you an example using my Apple AirPods. This is kind of what a telephone call sounds like. You're hearing the microphone on my Apple AirPods. Why does it sound like this? Because telephones, whether it be a landline or your iPhone, cut out the low frequencies and they cut out the high frequencies leaving only the mid frequencies, which just doesn't sound full and natural. They're great for phone calls, but not for full, good quality audio recording. And a lot of laptop mics are the same. They may or may not pick up the full audio spectrum of your voice. They're getting a lot better, especially Apple MacBook Pros, but I just like a dedicated microphone for my setup. Now, if you're just having an internal staff meeting or a quick conversation, sure, there's nothing wrong with just using your AirPods or the laptop mic as is. But if you're going to be the main presenter in a virtual meeting, perhaps that's going out to hundreds, if not thousands of virtual attendees, you might wanna think about how you sound in addition to what you're saying. Your message is important. And if your voice is clean and full, your audience is going to notice. And those desktop USB mics, although they look cool, still have to sit on your desk usually, which can put them further away from you. Or you have to have it close to you, which means it's in your camera view, and you may not want that. This is why I recommend the Movo VXR10 as a great solution. And here's what you'll need. Of course, you'll need a Movo VXR10 microphone. It's $40 on Amazon. You'll need a USB audio interface with a 1 8 inch microphone input jack, like this Ugreen model. This model has a 1 8 inch mic input which is usually labeled red, and it will have a small icon of a microphone next to the proper jack. 
This was $16 and I got the old USB-A style connector because I found that at least one of the models that I tried that had the newer USB-C style connector just didn't work. So with my MacBook Pro that only has USB-C connectors, I just use this model with a USB-A to USB-C adapter, like any one of these styles. This also allows me more options to plug it into older or different computers. And some sort of cheap tripod. I suggest something flexible like this style. You can find these all over Amazon starting at around $6 and going up from there. Make sure the model of tripod that you get has a quarter 20 bolt on the top like this. The mobile clip has a quarter 20 receiving thread in the bottom and your quarter 20 bolt from the top of your tripod should screw right to the bottom of the mobile clip. And the cheap tripods are great, but if you're going to be at a fixed location like your desk, then I highly recommend getting an articulating arm like this one. This model was only $13.50 on Amazon and is actually cheaper than some of the small tripods. If you do go with the articulating arm option, you will also need one of these adapters because the articulating arm comes with a 5 8 thread and you'll need to adapt that from 5 8 down to 1 quarter inch threads for the Movo VXR10 clip. But depending on how mobile you need to be, you may be better off with a tripod option. The last accessory that I recommend would be an additional longer 1 8 inch stereo cable with male connectors on both ends or a headphone extension cable, also 1 8 inch, which either one of these will just allow more options to move the microphone around depending on where you need it in relation to your laptop. You can get these for three to eight dollars depending on where you get them, but the cable that comes with the mic is a bit short, so you may want to pick one of these up anyway. Just don't go over about 10 feet when using these style cables. Three or four feet is plenty of length in most situations. Now, the most important part of all of this is microphone placement. This is why you may need to buy that additional 1 8 inch cable to get the mic closer to you. If you buy a great mic and put it in the wrong spot, it is not going to automatically improve your sound. You will have to balance where the microphone needs to be for the best audio quality and where you don't want it. So again, if you don't want the mic in view of your camera, you still need to have it close enough to capture your voice. The closer your mic is to your voice, the less of the room that you're going to hear. That's a topic in a video possibly for another time, but remember that your surroundings, the room, the carpet, the curtains, the tile, the windows, and the size of your room will all affect your sound in addition to the microphone and where you put that microphone. That being said, this mic is not meant to be put right up against your mouth. It's a condenser microphone, which means it's very sensitive. So you actually need to put the mic about one to two feet away from you. Otherwise, the air from your voice will distort the sound no matter what you do. So with our supplies, here's a very quick option for setup. Take the mic and put it into the included clip. Now there are two cables that come with the mic. There's one that looks identical on both ends. It's usually the coiled cable. The one you need has a tip, ring, and sleeve connector on both ends, separated by two black bands like this. The other cable that comes with the mic has an additional black band creating what we call a tip ring ring sleeve on one end and just a tip ring sleeve on the other. It's usually the cable that's not coiled. You'll just need to note that this is not the one you need to use for this. So put it aside. It's really meant for smartphones. If you can find a smartphone in 2020 that still has a headphone slash mic jack on it. So put it away, save it for later. Now we'll take our Ugreen USB mic adapter and plug it into the laptop. And again, for my MacBook Pro, I have to use a USB-A to USB-C adapter, but this option still provides power to the adapter. And again, having the USB-A model gives me more options to plug it into different or older computers if needed. And take either the included cable or the additional cable that hopefully you purchased. In my case, I have a 1 8 inch extension cable that is male on one end and female on the other. So I just use the included TRS coiled cable first, then use the extension cable to make the cable longer for more flexibility. Then plug the male end into the Ugreen mic input. On this USB mic adapter, the microphone input is the red jack. The other green jack is actually an output that you could run to external speakers or even to headphones. But for this example, we're just going to be using the onboard laptop speakers for our output. So don't plug anything into the green side. 
Then, of course, just plug the other end of the cable into the back of the Movil VXR10. Now comes the placement of the mic. And here's the reason that I suggest using one of these flexible tripods. If you're using your laptop directly in front of you on your desk, kind of like this, you can bend and shape the tripod and kind of hang the tripod on the screen of the laptop so that the mic is just over the webcam. You can also position the tripod somewhere off to the side of your laptop. You just really want to keep that microphone away from the laptop speakers. Microphones and speakers do not go together. That's how we get feedback. If you've ever heard feedback in a live environment or in your own office, it's usually because there's a microphone too close to a speaker. Now, if you're just using this microphone for online meetings, using Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Hangouts, those programs will kind of protect you in this situation because they will never send your own voice through your own laptop speakers. And most laptops also will protect you a bit in that they also won't automatically send the microphone directly out of the speakers unless you're using specific audio programs to change that. So Zoom, Teams, Hangouts, Skype, you should be just fine. But just be mindful and try to keep your mic from pointing directly at any speakers. I would also recommend using the included fuzzy windscreen. It looks a bit silly, but it will block any wind coming from, you know, like a desktop or ceiling fan. Or if you happen to be breathing directly at it without noticing, it will block your breath from distorting the microphone. Because nobody likes to hear this. We don't want to hear that. Just use the wind cover. Once we have the mic plugged in, we'll need to tell the computer which mic to use. So if you're on a Mac, you'll need to open System Preferences by clicking the Apple icon in the top left corner, clicking on System Preferences, finding the Sound icon, then clicking on the Input tab, and selecting the Ugreen USB mic adapter, which is actually called USB Audio Device. Unfortunately, it doesn't say Ugreen, and most of these devices are not going to have brand-specific names, so you just need to identify and make sure you have the right one selected. Once we have the right device selected, we now have this input volume slider. We can verify that we have the correct input selected by lightly tapping on the mic and verifying that we see those taps on screen, like this. Once you verify that you have a connection, back up to your normal speaking position and say something in your normal voice. You'll see the meters moving, then you'll just need to adjust the input volume of the USB audio device using the slider to as high as possible without the meters hitting the far right side. If the meters are constantly hitting the right side, then you either have the mic too close to you and or you'll need to adjust the slider to the left until your meters are hitting about 75% when you're at a normal distance and a normal speaking volume. The process is similar on Windows, but you'll need to go down to the taskbar and find the volume icon and right click on it. Then select Open Sound Settings. You'll be prompted with this window where you can scroll down and choose your input. Again, it's called USB audio device. Select that, then click on device properties. Then you'll be shown a very similar bar that will allow you to adjust the input level. Again, sliding to the left to reduce the input level and to the right to increase the input level. And again, as you speak, you can see the blue bar moving, indicating the input level. Completing this step sets the overall input of the Ugreen mic input for all other programs so it's important to complete this step and check. You may or may not have to check this setting every time you plug in your Ugreen interface, but like any good audio setup, it's always best to check your input level any time you plug in a new microphone or device, just to be sure. And now you're almost ready to go. Just because you plugged in your mic and checked the level doesn't mean that Zoom or any other program will automatically use that microphone as its source. Because computers aren't smart, they only do what we tell them to do. So anytime you're starting a new online meeting, you'll just need to verify that your software is using the new mic input. Let's use Zoom as an example. If we open Zoom and start or join a new meeting, we'll need to join with computer audio when prompted. But there's one more thing we'll need to check to ensure Zoom is using our new microphone input. Down in the bottom left corner of the Zoom window is the audio icon. Looks like a little microphone. Right next to the audio icon is a small triangle. Click that triangle. When you click on the triangle, it will pop up a list of available microphones and available speakers for Zoom to use. Zoom may or may not select any particular microphone to use, but since we went to all this trouble of setting up our new mic, we need to tell Zoom to use it. And since our Ugreen adapter is simply called USB audio device, we'll need to select that 
is our microphone in Zoom. So click on the little triangle and select USB audio device. At this point, we can again lightly tap on the microphone, lightly, and verify in Zoom that we see the little microphone icon light up with a green bar as you tap. And then we know we're good. We also have to tell Zoom and any other virtual meeting software what speaker we want to use, that is, how we want to hear everyone else. In my example, Zoom automatically chose the same device for my speakers. It chose USB audio device, which means that Zoom is sending the audio out of the green headphone jack on the USB adapter. But since I don't have anything plugged in there, I won't hear the meeting. So back to Zoom. We'll click on the little triangle again and select our internal speakers. Now the sound from Zoom will come out of our laptop speakers. You could actually still use your AirPods here as your speaker, so you could hear the other participants in your ears, but you could then keep the USB audio device selected as your microphone so that they hear you through your nice, new, full sounding microphone and not the AirPods microphone. Because remember, that will sound like this, like you're on a phone call. So make sure your microphone is set to the proper input. The last little bit of technical advice is to ensure that your laptop itself and your meeting software is output into the same set of speakers. This will ensure you don't have a lot of audio problems. So our Zoom call is ready to go. We have our USB audio device selected as our input, which is now taking the sound from our Movo VXR10, and that's what everyone now hears on the other end of the Zoom meeting. And we have our internal speakers selected in Zoom, so we hear our meeting through our internal laptop speakers. If you're on a Mac, go to System Preferences, again by clicking the Apple icon in the top left corner, and go to the Sound icon, then the Output tab, and make sure the output of the Mac is set to internal speakers as well. This is, of course, if you don't have or don't want to use any different speakers or headphones that may be plugged into your laptop. In Windows, we'll right-click on the volume icon, click on Open Sound Settings, then choose your proper output. Again, we'll choose internal speakers for this example. Having both your main laptop output and your Zoom output set to the same set of speakers means that you can then use your volume controls on your keyboard to adjust the overall volume of everything coming out of your laptop. If your laptop and meeting software are set to different speakers, the volume controls on your keyboard may not do what you're intending them to do. There's a whole world of ways to route audio and plug in multiple speakers and microphones, kind of like my setup, but anyone in that boat probably doesn't need to be watching this video. Once you understand how to ensure your meeting program is using the new correct audio input, you're set and off to the races, sounding better in your online meetings than most of your contemporaries and counterparts. Make them jealous. Now, if you're in more of a fixed location, like your desk, I'd recommend picking up an articulating arm. These can go almost anywhere. They're lightweight, and the Movo VXR10 is also lightweight. And having this style of arm means that you can place the mic almost anywhere, even above you, and pull it in or push it out of the way with ease when you need to start or stop your meeting. But of course, in this situation, you're going to need that longer eighth inch cable to get from the end of the arm down to where your mic input is located. I recommend about a six foot cable for this. <sighs> okay, I think that's it. No matter whether you've gone for the flexible tripod option or the articulating arm option, just remember to follow these steps to ensure your computer is receiving enough input from the mic. Again, that's the system preferences, sound icon, input tab, input volume adjustment slider. Then verify that your virtual meeting software is also using that mic. Because if you go through all of this and Zoom still has internal mic selected, then your attendees are still going to hear the mic that's built into your laptop. And all of this hard work will have been for naught. So audio routing, it's important. All right, some quick last minute tips. Number one, use the included windscreen on the mic. Number two, get an additional 1 8 inch cable from the start. Three or four feet usually be enough. If you're getting the articulating arm, go for a six to 10 foot cable. Number three, try not to bang around on your desk too much as the vibrations may move up the desk and be captured in the mic. Number four, make sure your computer and the meeting software have the proper microphone selected and the proper audio output selected as well. I know, I know, it may seem like a lot, but it really is a very simple, small, and portable investment that will make a huge impact on your sound quality. And if you're sending your message out to the world, I think it's worth it to sound your best. Good luck and have fun.